Welcome back, folks. If you saw in the last video, with this skid steer, I was doing several repairs, and a couple of them were hydraulic leaks. Unfortunately, I didn't resolve all the hydraulic leaks. We still have some leaking under the bucket after I parked it, and I realized it is still coming from this control valve. Um, I believe it's coming from the control valve um, in this skid steer. The control valve is located right here. I already have the plate off. It's a little bit wet today. That's just water. So I'm not going to take the entire control valve off. I don't believe I need to, but let's get in it. Let's get into it today and uh, see if we can replace the um, the O-rings around the spool that is causing the leak. I've taken a small plate off here and there's a bunch of junk and grime on that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take this larger plate off. Just clean it up while I'm down here. This is the hydraulic holding tank. It's plastic, it's all covered with grime, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, and you've got a drain tube here, it looks like, where we can drain out the hydraulic oil from here. Got it. Look at that. That was on there tight. One thing I really like about this skid steer is that it's all mechanical and it's pretty simple. Um, you know, it's in 2007 and this control valve is fairly straightforward. This is the control valve. Um, and basically what it does, it, it has three spools, one, two, and three. One spool controls the bucket, one controls the boom, and the other one controls the auxiliary hydraulics. So that would be this one here. Uh, bucket would be uh, where the, the boom would be this and the bucket would be this one you can, you can see it move a little bit so the manual says these spools can be removed uh, without having to remove this entire control valve and uh, so we can uh, we can take it out and replace the o-rings clean it up and reseat everything and I believe that is the cause of the leaks i pulled up the manual for the ls uh ls 185 let's zoom into the uh control valve removal disassembly parts inspection let's click here draining the hydraulic oil res reservoir is not required if the suction and return lines are capped where's the section that i want 
All right, here we go. Uh, the spools, the caps, and the O-rings. Uh, the spools can be pulled from the control valve housing while the valve is still in the skid steer by disconnecting the control linkage and removing the spool caps. Here's a, here's a good shot of the spools. There's three spools here. Here are the caps, um, and here are the O-rings. Remove the O-rings from the spool ports. Inspect the O-ring seating area for burrs and remove them before installing new O-rings. Now what we want to do, let's see. I want to take this off here. I think that is um, an Allen wrench. I believe there's a spring under here. All right. Whoa! Doggone it. Whoa! Well, there's some bearings and there's your spring. Four small bearings, one big bearing. There's a small pin that needs to be removed. This can come out. Clean that off before we put it back in there. our issue of leak right there oh shoot I just noticed this all this hydraulic fluid must have leaked out I didn't even see that from up top and here's the um it's an o-ring it's a metal washer and then it's a hardened plastic flange piece fits fits in there and the metal washer and then the o-ring like this and that would seal that up right there right about there all right these parts are cleaned ready to be put back in the machine I'm not a hundred percent sure how all these balls came out hmm, so Okay, so I think the spring probably goes in there first. And then we have we have four different si two different sizes of balls, four small ones, one large one. I believe the large one probably goes right there. And then these small ones, maybe they fit on the side like this. It'd be great if they just stay in there like that. 
three, four. All right. Oh, I can't. I believe it goes in like this. It doesn't feel right though. And then this on the top. Notice here I have this cylinder with the two lines at the top. It's just, there's a lot of wiggle room in there. And then here I flip it over in my hand thinking I'm installing it incorrectly. This will cause trouble in a few minutes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's nice and tight. It goes on there, and that goes on there, and then goes. Aha. All right. Okay, we are going to reinstall this from the inside of the machine here. Let's see if I can get it up here. I'm gonna use a little bit of thread locker on these. And then the metal washer and the plastic washer. So I picked up these filters a while back. Um, I'm just going to make sure I have clean hydraulic fluid that I put in here since I got might have gotten a little bit of debris in here. Okay, we're put back together. This is the first start. So you guys can see it when I see it. Hopefully there's nothing to see. Uh, hold on. See belt. Okay. noticed I couldn't get it back down so this can't get, came up it's not going back down now what if I put something in backwards that's not good but it came down initially first time first time it came down just fine 
So I was reviewing the video to find out the mistake that I had made and I realized that I had installed that cylinder backwards. So here I need to remove this cap and reinstall the cylinder the right way. Unfortunately I've already filled the machine back up with hydraulic fluid forcing me to do this completely underneath the machine without pulling out the spool. Alright I got this on backwards these two little lines here should be on the outside turned around here so there we go so let's take big ball this guy let's put him in there i believe he oh shoot did those other balls did that other ball just fall in yeah it sure did all right so those balls do fall all the way through Oh, that, that one fell down, hit me in my face. Or does the spring stay on the other side? Does the spring go on the inside? You know what? I think the spring goes on the inside. Oh, oh where did they go? Right there. Oh, I'll just, ah, see, that's... Yeah. Okay, here is my challenge. I need to install these four outer bearings and one inner bearing without letting any of them fall out. The one large bearing needs to be pushed inside the tube past these outer bearings, compressing the spring inside. The outer bearings are forced outward while I am pushing the large bearing back into the tube. So I need to hold all four of them in place with my fingers, carefully not letting them fall down while setting that inner bearing. The spring in the back is pushing against me, making it extremely difficult. Then, somehow, I need to install the cylinder cap on top of all these bearings without letting them fall out. Oh, man, I think I got it. All the balls are in there. All right, I wasn't really explaining what I was doing. That was a little bit tricky. I think it's all working now. All right, I think we're good. After putting the spool back in and the caps back on into the control valve here, I believe we have fixed the leak. I'm gonna run it for a good while and see if I see any leaks on this side, any leaks on that side. This is real simple how this works. Um, you know, the, the spools, uh, whether they're in or out, they basically allow hydraulic fluid to go, you know, throughout these high pressure lines and that will operate the bucket, the boom, or the auxiliary hydraulics. There's a good YouTube video on Farmcraft 101. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, he describes uh, how a hydraulic system works much better than I can. Um, All right, folks, I think I got this fixed. I can tell you that I do not see the leak anymore in here. Uh, at least on the middle spool, there is no leak. That's the only one I took off. The left one and the right one I left as is. I do not think those were leaking. I do not think it was leaking from the back, but I cleaned this off. I pressure washed it. Uh, I'm going to run this for a little bit and park it. Let it sit here. Hopefully we got it fixed. Very simple. It wasn't that hard to get to. Once I figured out how to take everything apart and put it back together, it's, you know, it's really uh, not very difficult. Uh, the mechanics of it pretty neat actually. Um, it's just all mechanical hydraulics. The control valve is pretty straightforward and simple how it works. Uh, so there's not a lot of parts to this machine. Not, not a ton of parts that can break. So I'm happy with this machine. It's strong. It's powerful. Um, it does what I need it to do. I think with about 1500 hours on it, you know, it's got many, many uh, years to go on this thing. That's very low for a machine like this. I don't know what this is. This, I inherited this. It looks like somebody try to fix that but uh, in any case I've, I've lifted some heavy loads with this and uh, doesn't seem to have a problem so all right well you know what to do a thumbs up uh, subscribe would be helpful um, please share this video appreciate it and uh, that helps the algorithm um, and we'll see you on the next one well it is crazy windy out here we will test out this GoPro mic today to see how it does in these windy conditions Testing out this GoPro on the wind today. It's quite windy. How does it sound? <laughs>